Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Greedy Tech and this is the review of the Xiaomi Redmi 5. This is the successor to the Redmi 4 and in a way, it brings a lot of new things to the table. So let's see what all it packs. It is being sold in 3 variants. Base variant starts at 8000 rupees for 2GB of RAM and 16GB of storage. Next variant is priced at 9000 rupees for 3GB of RAM and 32GB of storage. Finally, the top end variant is priced at 11000 rupees for 4GB of RAM and 64GB of storage. It's available in 4 colors, black, gold, rose gold and leg blue. And if you want my suggestion, go with the black color. Just in case if you're looking for some accessories for the Redmi 5, you can find most of them in me.com or MI Home. Now coming to the design and build, this is how the phone looks. On the front, it is the display with the new 18 to 9 aspect ratio with smaller bezels at the top and bottom. Above the display, we have the sensors, dedicated soft touch, earpiece and the front facing camera. Below the display, it's completely plain. It doesn't have any capacitor buttons. Instead, we have on-screen buttons. On the back, we have the camera, single LED flash, followed by a fingerprint scanner and MI branding. At the top, we have the audio jack, a microphone hole and the IR blaster. At the bottom, we have dual speaker grills. One is for the microphone and another one is for the mono speaker. And at the center, we have the micro USB charging port. Now coming to the build, on the back, we have a metallic back panel with plastic strips at the top and bottom for antennas. This phone looks exactly like the Redmi Note 5, more like a smaller version of it. And the design is very similar to the Redmi Note 4 and even the Redmi Note 3. So purely in terms of design and build, everything is good, but there isn't anything new. It's the same old boring design on the back with a new bigger display on the front. On the front, we have the display with the new 18 to 9 aspect ratio, protected by a 2.5D curved Corning Gorilla glass. Despite its bigger looks, it still weighs 157 grams and has a thickness of 7.7 mm that makes it thinnest Redmi phone ever made by Xiaomi. Now considering the entire form factor and how huge the phone looks, in hand, it does feel slightly heavy. While taking calls or making calls, this phone fits comfortably in a single hand, but it can't be used single-handedly, unless you have huge hands like mine. Its back has a nice metallic finish with the anti-fingerprint coating, but it still catches some smudges. Just like all the previous Redmi Note series phones, even this phone feels super slippery in hand. And to make things worse, this phone even has a nice little camera bump, so if you're not careful, you will end up scratching the camera lens. Now to make our lives a little more easy, Xiaomi has also included a free TPU case in the box. And this is how it looks. If you get the black colored Redmi 5, you will get this black colored TPU case. And if you go with any other color, you will get a transparent case. So in terms of design and build, I really don't have any complaints except for slight disappointment with the same old boring design. Now coming to the hardware section, this phone has all the basic sensors including gyroscope, compass, FM radio, LED notification light, infrared blaster at the top and a fingerprint scanner on the back. Fingerprint scanner on this phone is super fast, definitely the best in its price segment. But sadly it comes with only one gesture. In the stock camera application, we can take pictures using the fingerprint scanner. Now considering how huge the phone is, I really wish Xiaomi could add a new feature to pull down the notification bar using the fingerprint scanner, just like all other phones out there. Now the infrared blaster on the top works without any issues and it is something I really love on the Xiaomi phones. This is the SIM card tray and just like all the previous Redmi series phones, it comes with a nano SIM slot along with a hybrid SIM slot. I was really hoping for a dedicated SD card slot just like on the Redmi 5A or the Redmi Y series. Sadly, that didn't happen once again. This phone supports dual SIM along with VoLTE and we can use Geo without any problem. We can also make and receive video calls directly using the stock phone dialer. We don't need to install any third party applications to do that. Finally, there is no face unlock feature on this phone as of now. Only the Note 5 Pro has this feature. This phone packs a 5.7 inch IPS display with HD plus resolution in the new 18 to 9 aspect ratio covered by a 2.5D curved Corning Gorilla glass. It has a maximum brightness of 500 nits and sunlight legibility is pretty good. Display looks slightly warm, color reproduction and viewing angles are all good. Now there is something really interesting going around at the corners of this phone. Unlike other phones in its price segment, this phone comes with curved corners which is a rare thing to see and just makes the display look more premium. Or maybe it's just my thing. I really love the curved corners on the edges. For regular day-to-day -day usage like using Facebook, Instagram 
or checking mails, I didn't notice any pixels. Even while watching videos, I didn't have any issues with the display. But while playing games like Modern Combat 5 or the Asphalt 8, the display felt pixelated and I wished it had a better display. Except for that little disappointment, I really don't have any complaints with the display. Now coming to the good things about the display, we can change the contrast and color temperature of the display. It even has reading mode to protect your eyes at night. Now finally, Xiaomi gives us some nice software features like the option to hide the navigation bar and using a quick ball for navigation. And that gives us a much more immersive experience while using this phone. On the rear, this phone sports a 12 megapixel camera with f2.2 aperture and a single LED flash. On the front, it sports a 5 megapixel camera with a dedicated soft LED flash. I have posted a dedicated video for the camera review. Check it out for more information. But here's the gist. Rear camera on this phone is really good, at least for the price. Colors are to the warmer side and it overexposes a shot, but capturing speeds, sharpness, focusing speeds are all good. Dynamic range in HDR mode is really good. Low light performance isn't all that impressive. Almost all the pictures come out to be very soft, but color reproduction is good. Now coming to selfies, they are slightly wider than Redmi Note 5, but not all that wide. In good lighting conditions, it does take some good selfies, but they aren't the best in the price segment. Now coming to video recording, we can record video in 1080p using the front and rear cameras, but there is no stabilization. So the footage from the front and rear cameras is very shaky. Footage quality, focusing speeds are all pretty good. So to wrap it up, cameras on this phone are good, but not the best in the price segment, especially the front facing camera. For low light selfies, it uses a dedicated soft light and it seems like a huge improvement from Redmi 4. But in reality, it doesn't help all that much. Under the hood, Redmi 5 sports a Snapdragon 450 processor with 8 Cortex A53 cores, Adreno 506 GPU built using the 14 nanometer architecture. It's the same processor seen in Vivo V7 and the V7 Plus, which are priced almost twice as this phone. These are the Anti2 and Geekbench cores. Performance, just like the numbers, is pretty fluid. I didn't notice any lags or any hiccups. It was very responsive. Now coming to the gaming experience, because of the smaller HD Plus resolution and Adreno 506 GPU, gaming experience was really good. There was no lag and there was no major heating issues. As I've said, display felt slightly pixelated, except for that little issue, there was no problem while playing games. While playing games, maximum temperature on the phone didn't cross 44 degrees and when I really pushed it by using the camera application continuously for more than 5 minutes, maximum temperature was 47 degrees. It might seem a lot, but other phones like Infinix Hot S3 or the Honor phones crossed more than 50 degrees. Xiaomi has done a great job dissipating the heat on this phone. By the way, I have the 3GB RAM variant with 32GB of internal storage. Out of the box, we get about 1.5GB of free RAM and 24GB of free space. Go for the 3GB RAM variant at the very least. And if you're gonna buy this phone, I'm gonna recommend you to buy this variant. If you get the 2GB RAM variant, it will have around 8GB of space for your user apps and user data. And that is seriously not sufficient, especially if you're planning to use two SIMs on this phone. Unless you're a very very basic user, I wouldn't recommend you buying the 16GB variant. Now coming to the software section, this phone is running a heavily skinned version of Android called MIUI 9 on top of Android 7.1.2. This phone might get Android 8.0 Oreo update in the second half of 2018. Now the best thing about this phone would be the software features and regular software updates. This phone is packed with a lot of cool features like double tap to wake, three finger screenshot, secondary space, multi-users, dual apps and many more. I have already made a dedicated video on best features of Redmi 5. Do check it out for the complete list of features on this phone. Now with that said, in the software department, there aren't any issues with this phone, but memory management right out of the box isn't all that good. So I would suggest you to go to the developer options and turning off memory optimization and then rebooting the phone. Once you do that, memory management will improve a lot and your phone will perform much better. So to wrap it up, in the software department, as of now there aren't any issues and this phone is packed with a lot of cool stuff. Now coming to the audio department, though it has two speaker grills at the bottom, it only has a mono speaker under the right grill. It is loud and audible, but not the loudest in the price segment. Now coming to the audio experience on the headset, it's pretty much average, just like any other phone out there. Now coming to the battery segment, 
This phone packs a 3300 milliampere battery, comes with a micro USB charging port and comes with a regular 10 watts power adapter in the box. By the way, it doesn't have fast charging and it takes around 2 hours to charge the phone completely. Now if we compare this phone to the Redmi 4 which came with a 4000 milliampere battery, yes it's a slight letdown but this phone comes with a Snapdragon 450 processor built using the 14 nanometer architecture. So it is very power efficient and you will get very similar battery life. On average, I got around 5 to 7 hours of screen on time on normal to high usage and no matter how I used it, it definitely lasted me a day with at least 20 to 30 percent of battery left. So you really don't have to worry about the battery life with this phone. So guys to conclude, this phone is really a good phone. It has a lot of good things going on. The slimmest Redmi phone out there and it also weighs just 157 grams like pretty good performance, good cameras, a very power efficient processor, latest version of MIUI with a lot of cool features. Now with all that said, is this the best phone in this price segment? Definitely no. And the main reason for that is the pricing. Xiaomi has done two things wrong with this phone. They didn't include a dedicated SD card slot and they priced the base variant starting at 8000 rupees. As I've said in the performance section, out of the 16GB of storage, you get about 8GB for your user apps and that's definitely not sufficient if you're going to use two SIMs on this phone. Next, if you go with the 32GB variant, you're paying 9000 rupees and you're just 1000 rupees away from the Redmi Note 5 which comes with a bigger screen, better performance and a bigger battery. So even though this is a great phone, pricing simply doesn't make any sense. Now with all that said, if you're someone who wants a Xiaomi phone, maybe for the software features, but with a smaller form factor and less weight, then you can definitely go with the Redmi 5. But if you want my suggestion, I'll suggest you to go with the Infinix Hot S3 if you want a dedicated SD card slot and a better front facing camera along with portrait selfies. Yes, in terms of performance, Redmi 5 will be slightly better, but Infinix was also pretty good for the other features it offers. Now, if you don't mind the bigger screen size and a slightly heavy phone, you can go with the Redmi Note 5 priced at 10,000 rupees. You can also consider Honor 9 Lite if you're looking for portrait mode for the front and rear cameras along with a smaller and a lightweight phone. So guys, what do you think about this phone? Will you buy this phone or any other phone? Do let me know by commenting below this video and if you're planning to buy this phone, use the link in the description. It really helps the channel. If you want us to make any specific video, tweet out to us with the hashtag AskGradyTech on Twitter and we will try to make it as soon as possible. If you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe to our channel to see more cool videos on tech. I'm Nikhil from GradyTech signing off. Have a nice day.